Okay, so in the previous video, we, we talked a little bit about that michaelis menten model and how it's a two-step process where you have the enzyme that can bind to the substrate uh, in this binding step right over here. And then you have the second step or the catalysis step. And we talked about those three assumptions that you can make. And one of those assumptions is that we're measuring at initial velocity, right? And because we're measuring at initial velocity, we don't have any products. So we can assume that the K minus two is close to zero or approximately zero. And that's why we don't have this K minus two term in our uh, model or for this uh, model for the michaelis menten equation, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna now add inhibitors to the mix and see how inhibitors can play a role in affecting the rate of our enzymes, okay? So we, to simplify it, we, we're, we, we know that we can only add inhibitors to two different locations. Even though I know we have competitive, uncompetitive, non-competitive, mix, and all these things, it sounds like a lot of different words that sound the same, but just really, or in its simplest form, the only two places we can add an inhibitor is either to the free enzyme, right over here. So we can either add it to the free enzyme and we're gonna form this enzyme inhibitor complex, or what we can do is we can add the inhibitor once the ES complex forms and form this enzyme substrate inhibitor complex right over here, okay? So the, these are the two places that the inhibitor can bind. And of course it can bind in different locations on the enzyme, like for example, the active site versus um, an allosteric site. But in its simplest form, the inhibitor can either bind to the free enzyme or the ES complex. And then that's how we get our different competitive, uncompetitive, non-competitive, and mix, okay? So I drew out these two pictures, okay? And have, I'm gonna use these to explain how the KM is gonna be changing and stuff like that. So, and the VMAX and stuff like that. So have these pictures in the back of your mind. Notice how in this case, the inhibitor bound to the free enzyme and blocked the substrate from binding. And then in this case, the, the substrate already bounds your enzyme and the inhibitor co comes and locks in your substrate into your ES complex, okay? So what we're gonna do over here is we have this table, it's a lot of information, but I'm gonna break it down piece by piece, okay? Ignore the stuff for, or let me erase these things right over here, okay? So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to move these somewhere else, and then we'll talk about these in another video because I wanna make sure that I have enough time for this, okay? I'm gonna go like this. We're just gonna go over here. Okay, so like we said, we have four different types of inhibitor. We have competitive, uncompetitive, mixed, and non-competitive. And each of these binds to either the free enzyme, the ES complex at the active site, or the regulatory site. And it's a lot of information, but I want you guys to know that if you can understand competitive, so if you can understand competitive and uncompetitive inhibitors, that gives you the tools you need to understand mixed and non-competitive. Because mixed, and it, as it implies in its name, mixed is a mixture of competitive and uncompetitive, kind of. And non-competitive is a special case of mixed where it binds to both the free enzyme and the ES complex equally, okay? So if you can understand the first two, you can then reason out the logic for mixed and non-competitive, okay? So now let's start off with competitive and go through the logic for competitive and uncompetitive, and then we'll build up to mixed and non-competitive, okay? So for competitive inhibitors, it attaches to the free enzyme, so it's this case over here. Uncompetitive inhibitors, it binds to the ES complex, which is that case over there, okay? They both bind to the active site, and now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna skip over the VMAX, I'm gonna get back to that. I'm gonna now talk about the KM, because I think these pictures really help visualize what's going on with the KM. So first thing I'm gonna say is that the KM itself is never changing, this is a constant, and it describes the affinity of your uh, enzyme or is a pseudo measure of affinity of your enzyme for your substrate. So that's never going to actually change uh, because it's that the affinity is something that it's always going to have. But whenever you add an inhibitor, the CAM up appears to change or it looks like it's changing. And that's why we say CAM apparent. Okay. The APP stands for apparent CAM. So it looks like it's changing. So now let's see what's happening. So for competitive inhibitors, we see that the CAM appearance is increasing. Now let's think about this. Well, remember we said that the KM is a pseudo measure of affinity. So what was the true measure of affinity? Well, the true measure of affinity was KD. So let's just think about it in terms of KD. Well, we say that when the KD increases, we have lower affinity. And then when the KD decreases, we have a higher affinity, 
And the same thing applies for the KM. So this could be KD, but I could have also said the same thing for the KM, because again, the KM is a pseudo measure of affinity. So I'm just gonna put over here, KM. So a higher KM, lower affinity, lower KM, higher affinity. Now, let's look at this picture over here that I drew out, and let's try to think about it in terms of affinity. Well, if the inhibitor and the substrate are competing to bind to the enzyme's active site, so you could think about it that the substrate can either bind to the enzyme's active site or the inhibitor can bind to the free enzyme's active site. So they're kind of fighting each other for that same binding spot, the, bi the same binding spot. So let's say the inhibitor now binds into that, act, that, po that pocket and it blocks the substrate from binding. Okay, so it kind of blocks it from binding. Well, if you're talking about in terms of affinity, does it look like the enzyme has a higher affinity now for the substrate or a lower affinity? Well, you're going to say, well, now that the inhibitor is there, it's going to look like the enzyme has a lower affinity because now the substrate's less likely to bind. So because it looks like it has a lower affinity, that means we're going to say that the KM is going to, or the parent KM is going to increase. So that's what we're going to say for the case of competitive inhibitors. Because the inhibitor is blocking the substrate from binding, it looks like it has a lower affinity, so a higher KM. Now we're going to go to uncompetitive inhibitors. Well, uncompetitive inhibitors, we see that the KM decreases. Now let's try to think about it from the picture and see what the picture helps us understand. Well, the, for com uncompetitive inhibitors, it binds to the ES complex. So the ES complex already forms, so the substrate already binds to the enzyme, and then the inhibitor binds. Well, if our substrate is already bound to our enzyme, and now the inhibitor comes in and it kind of comes in so that it locks in that substrate so that it can't really leave, right? Because it now looks like the substrate is gonna be bound and it can't really leave, it looks like the enzyme has a higher affinity for its substrate, right? And because it looks like it has a higher affinity, that means that it has a lower KM apparent. So to resummarize what I just said for the two cases, again, the, for the competitive inhibitor, the inhibitor blocks the substrate from binding so it looks like it has a lower affinity, which is a higher KM. For uncompetitive inhibitors, the inhibitor locks in that substrate or it blocks it from leaving. And because the substrate can't really leave, what's going to happen is it looks like it has a higher affinity or a lower can. Okay, so that's the basis of uh, competitive versus uncompetitive inhibitors. Now let's go and apply this logic to mixed and non competitive inhibitors. We'll get to the Vmax in a second. So now for mixed, well, mixed, as its name implies, is a mixture of competitive and uncompetitive inhibitors, except it now binds at a regulatory site. The binding site is different, but it binds to the free enzyme in the ES complex, okay, at a certain ratio. Um, it's not gonna be exactly equal because that's the, the special case of mixed is non-competitive where it binds to both the free enzyme and the ES complex equally. So we're gonna say that it binds to both the free enzyme, okay, it binds to this one and to the ES complex at a certain ratio, but it's not going to be equal. It's not gonna be equal. Now let's think about this. Well, if it binds at a ratio that's not equal, let's think about it. Well, if it bounds better to the free enzyme, right? So if it bounds better to the free enzyme, okay? That means it's going to be more like a competitive inhibitor, right? It binds better to the free enzyme, so it blocks the substrate from binding, so it looks like it has a lower affinity, which is a higher KM. So because it binds more readily to the free enzyme, okay? We're going to say that it has a higher KM apparent. But remember, mixed inhibitors can either bind better to the free enzyme or to the ES complex. Let's say instead it bounds better to the ES complex. Okay? If it binds better to the ES complex, it's going to be more like an uncompetitive inhibitor. Okay? And because it's more like an uncompetitive inhibitor, it's going to lock in that substrate so you can effectively think about it that the affinity increases and we're going to again see a lower KM apparent. So, Again, if it's more like a competitive inhibitor, we're gonna see a higher KM. If it's more like a uncompetitive inhibitor, we're gonna see a lower KM. And again, this depends on if it binds better to the free enzyme or the ES complex, which, is, uh, which will affect the KM in, respectively, okay? So that's for a mixed inhibitor. Now we're gonna apply to a special case of mix, which is non-competitive. Non-competitive means that it binds to the free enzyme and the ES complex equally, okay? So now it binds to both of them equally. So you can think of it like this. Well, if it bounds better to the free enzyme, we saw that the CAM would increase. If it bounds better to the ES complex, we saw that the CAM would decrease. 
So now if it binds to both of them equally, well, you could think of it like taking the average of two numbers, the cam is going to stay the same, okay? Because now the affinity is not really gonna be changing because one factor is gonna increase the affinity, one factor is gonna decrease the affinity. So because they're affected by that same amount because the ratio at which it binds to the free enzyme versus the ES complex is the same, we're gonna say that the cam parent also stays the same. Now let's see if we can reason out what happens for the Vmax, okay? So again, we're gonna start off with competitive versus uncompetitive and then build up to mix and non-competitive. So Vmax again is that maximal velocity that we're going to be reaching, okay, when all of our enzyme is mounted substrate. And notice for competitive inhibitors are the only case where your Vmax is going to be staying the same. Now, why is this? Well, let's think about it like this. Let's go and draw another picture, okay? I'm gonna erase a few things. Or maybe actually, let me just draw it at the bottom, okay? Yeah, let me just draw it here, okay? So what we're gonna do over here is we're gonna just put one enzyme. Even though in cer certain systems, we're gonna have way more enzymes and way more substrates, we're just gonna simplify it, okay? So let's say we had one enzyme, and now we're gonna add in one substrate and one inhibitor. Okay, so the enzyme doesn't care what it binds to it. As soon as one thing comes close enough and it match, it's physically and chemically complementary to the structure of the active site, right? The enzyme is going to bind to it and then that's what's going to happen. So the enzyme doesn't really care what it binds to as long as it's complementary to what it binds to. So now let's say we add both the substrate and the, inhib the inhibitor. Well, you can think of it like kind of like probability. If you're like looking at it or if the enzyme is freely floating around and the substrate and the inhibitor are freely floating around, What's gonna happen is that that substrate's gonna come and bind in, right? And it can be converted to product. And then we're not gonna have a decrease rate. But what could also happen is that instead of the substrate binding, the inhibitor could bind and the inhibitor is not gonna to get to a product. It's just gonna bind there and block our reaction from happening, okay? So once the inhibitor binds, it's not gonna let us get to our maximum reaction rate. So when we have this scenario happen, well, what's gonna happen? Well, we just said that the the Vmax is going to decrease or stay the same. But I just showed you in the picture that the Vmax is gonna decrease if the inhibitor binds. Well, let's think about creative solutions to this problem. Well, what if instead of having only one substrate, because remember our michaelis menten curve, it goes on forever. We can, if we're showing our substrate concentration, we can add infinite, or let's just say we could add an infinite amount of substrate as we go along our x-axis, right? So that means that in, for every one inhibitor, what we could do then is have, let's say, a billion substrates. So we have just all these substrates floating around. Right? So now by adding all these substrates and uh, having a very small concentration of inhibitors, so let's just say that we had our concentration of substrate much, much greater than the concentration of inhibitor. Well, what do you think is going to happen to your maximal rate over here? What's going to happen to your v naught over here? Are you gonna see your maximal rate or do you think it's gonna be decreased? Well, if you think about it, it kind of looks like it might decrease by just a little bit, but because we're saying that, oh, as we add way more substrate than our inhibitor, well, think about it like this probability-wise. What's, if one substrate binds over here, okay, or, or what's more likely to bind now, a substrate or an inhibitor? Well, we, because we have way more substrate than inhibitor, we're gonna say that our substrate's way more likely to bind and that means that we're gonna to get to our maximal rate because once this substrate binds, then the next thing that's gonna bind is another substrate, then another substrate, then another substrate. Because there's way more substrate than the concentration of inhibitors, we can effectively say that we're gonna reach that maximal velocity. And that's why the Vmax is going to stay the same in the case of a competitive inhibitor. So the reason why it stays the same again is because we can outcompete, outcompete inhibitor, by increasing, greatly increasing the concentration of your substrate. Now, you might say, well, let's just do the same thing for uncompetitive or mixed or non-competitive. Why does the Vmax decrease in each of those cases? Well, let's think about this. So what's the same for uncompetitive, mixed, and non-competitive? So they all have a component, if you look over here, so this one binds to the ES complex, this one binds to both unequally and both equally. So all of these three cases, they all have a component that binds to the ES complex, okay? And this is the key. Because all of them bind at least partially to the ES complex, notice how, let's just now do a new scenario. Let's just do a new scenario. 
Let's say now I'm going to add in, or let's not do two enzymes, let's just do one. Okay, now it's going to at least in some regard bind to the ES complex. So let's say now the inhibitor likes to bind to the ES complex and we have this. Okay, so now let's just try the same thing. Let's just try adding way more substrate than inhibitor. Okay, so now we added way more substrate than inhibitor. But what is the problem we run into? Well, if you look, does the inhibitor care that there's substrate bound to our enzyme? Are they like competing for that binding spot? No, because in this case, the inhibitor is binding once the substrate already binds. Okay, so for the case of an uncompetitive inhibitor, the substrate already binds to our enzyme and then the inhibitor binds. Well, even if I add way an infinite amount of substrate, the inhibitor is not going to care that there's more substrate. If anything, it's going to like that there's more substrate because now we can form more ES complexes and then we can decrease the rate of our reaction. Okay, so because in the case of uncompetitive, mixed and non-competitive, they all have a component that binds to the ES complex, you can effectively say that the Vmax is going to decrease in each of these cases because no matter how much substrate I add, I still can't outcompete the binding of the inhibitor to that, that location. Okay, because one binds to regulatory site, one binds to an active site, but the same concept applies. The inhibitor in all of these cases binds to that ES complex. So me adding more substrate makes more ES complexes. And then because the inhibitor likes to bind to the ES complex, we're gonna decrease the rate of the reaction as we add more and more substrate, okay? So the two contrasting ideas here is that in the case of a competitive inhibitor, it binds to the free enzyme. So the inhibitor and substrate are competing to bind to that active site. So by adding more substrate, I can outcompete the inhibitor so that my Vmax stays the same. But in the case of uncompetitive, mixed and non-competitive, what's happening is that by the inhibitor likes to bind at least partially to the enzyme substrate complex or the ES complex. So that means that because it's bind to the ES complex, it doesn't matter how much more substrate I add because the more substrate I add, I'm gonna be forming more and more ES complex which the inhibitor likes because it binds to the ES complex and then prevents the reaction. And that's why the Vmax is going to decrease in the case of uncompetitive mixed and non-competitive.